Hello, this week is National Science Week and this year's theme is growth. British Science Week is a 10 day celebration of science, technology, engineering and maths that will take place between the 11th and 20th of March 2020. If you go to the British Science Week website, you can browse events that are going on in your area as well as plan some activities that you can get involved in. So this theme of growth is a very fitting theme, theme for what has been a very turbulent time for us all. So growth links with multiple areas across science, technology, engineering, maths and humanities. Consider your own personal growth over the last 12 months. Not just your physical growth, how tall you've become, but also how you've grown emotionally and dealt with the issues surrounding the pandemic. In humanities, you study population growth and urban development. In technology, construction and engineering, you learn how quickly skyscrapers can grow with modern building methods, including new 3D printing of affordable homes. So we can find examples of growth within all subjects and all around us. In your grandparents' days in the 1960s, the then British Prime Minister Harold Wilson said in his speech at the Labour Party conference, in terms of a scientific re revolution, Britain is going to be forged in the white heat of this revolution. So what revolution was he talking about? What does the word revolution make you think about? Harold Wilson was not talking about civil wars or overthrowing governments that we are so sadly current, currently witnessing. He was talking about a revolution in science and technology. He saw Britain becoming a powerful nation through scientific discoveries that would be used to make helpful products for our society, the process of technology. This was one of the most dynamic periods of, sci of growth of scientific change in the 20th century. What sort of scientific visions did people have in the past? You could call them science fiction. And have they come true? How right was the science fiction of the future? And what influences whether science fiction becomes science fact? Take a look at your teachers. They were all young once. Let's be generous and say that in the 1980s and 70s, they were your age. What everyday things did they grow up without that now we take for granted? For example, dishwashers, solar calculators, mobile phones and cash machines are some of these. The interesting thing is that the scientific knowledge required to make these products was already known in the 1970s. So why were they not commonplace then? And why have these applications of science become part of our everyday lives now, whilst others have not? For science to be useful, we must all be able to apply it to something to make it work for us. You could say that all science is science fiction unless it can be used. To be usable, the science must be known to a large enough group of people who can then think about it, and it must be practical to help us perform a task. So, for example, mobile phones, dishwashers and cash machines have become a reality because people wanted them. People are willing to pay for items like mobile phones, so it is profitable for manufacturers to spend so much money developing the science into reality. If people had not bought mobile phones, this would not have happened and the telecommunications industry would never have grown. Science fiction writers believe that in true science fiction stories, the author develops a plot that is close to well-known science. They try to imagine what the next steps will be from the way things are now. And in the early 1930s, science fiction stories discussed rocket ships and atomic power, both of which have become reality. Huge invading bugs, though, have been very popular in science fiction, but they have not become reality as far as we know yet. So how many of these science fiction stories, films and series do you know? So we have in the top left Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and how he was brought to life with electricity. We have Ready Player One, Ernest Cline's um, novel that was screenplayed by Steven Spielberg about virtual reality. We have um, two stories from Jules Verne, From the Earth to the Moon, about man landing on the moon way before this happened, and his 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, about uh, a mysterious craft that could dive underwater, um, which we now know about submarines. We've got Marvel's Iron Man and his suit. We've got from Star Trek, my personal favourite, 
um, a communication device, which looks very similar to one of the earliest um, mobile phones, as well as a 3D food printing device that was on board the ship. And on the far left, we have from your grandparents era and great grandparents potentially era, some of the Thunderbirds rockets transport, okay, and the Jurassic Park um, amber with the mosquito that was supposed to have bitten a dinosaur millions of years ago. And then the blood, um, the DNA was taken from the blood of the mosquito to be able to clone dinosaurs and bring them back. So these were all considered science fiction and that they may never potentially come true. However, science and technology, the reality, we can see here um, Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse, which is basically what's come from Ernest Klein's Ready Player One. We can see a 3D house being printed in South Africa to create affordable housing. We can see a life-saving defibrillator, which is based on using electricity to bring the heart back to life to, to start pumping again. We've got nuclear submarines and SpaceX rockets. Um, and we've got Virgin Galactic space travel, as well as man landing on the moon. And we've got in the far right hand corner, the Talos um, Iron Man exoskeleton military suit that is based on X-Man. And we've got animal cloning Dolly the sheep um, from uh, cloning from Jurassic Park. These two images in the top right are actually more recently from the James Webb Space Telescope that was launched um, around about Christmas time to study the earlier stars. So these are the realities from the science fiction that has been believed in the past and the stories. Fiction isn't always pure fantasy. So wait, what may come next? Well, this was a cartoon series from a long, long time ago called The Jetsons, and they travelled around in a flying car. The one on the right is the UK's version of Elon Musk's Stephen Fitzpatrick's concept. It's called the Vertical Aerospace's Electrified Flying Taxi. And currently it flies silently at 200 miles per hour, carrying four passengers and pilots a range of about 120 miles. It is being described as the modern day British engineering champion. So the future of growth in science and technology. Amongst you all, there are the next generation of scientists, mathematicians, designers, engineers, and most importantly, dreamers, to ensure science and technology grows in positive ways to advance humanity and enhance everyone's world. Thank you for listening.